My name is Aaron Lopresti. I've been a comic book artist, a commercial illustrator, and a writer for over 25 years. And this is my YouTube channel. I generally like to do a quick sketch uh, layout before I start the finished color commission. Um, it's always nice to have an idea of exactly what you want to do before you start doing, especially on a big piece of art that um, is going to be very detailed. Sometimes I'll even do a second sketch to kind of get some different ideas out there so I can kind of make a decision on what might be the best pose. Again, so I'm not working it out on the finished art. I think actually this is going to be the winner. When I do one of these 11 by 17 color commissions, I use a nicer paper than even what I use for my uh, comic book work. So I really don't like to waste the paper. So as I'm working on the, the pencil drawing or layout here on the finished paper, I try not to press too hard because a lot of times it damages the paper if you have to erase too much. And so I will try and not mess this up. And as you can see, I build up my drawing not necessarily using stick figures like, you know, we've all been taught in art class, but I tend to sort of meander around and create the figure um, by loosely sketching it. As you can see, the uh, face on this is a little bit different now, and you can see that the, the figure work, the line work, is much cleaner than what we were just looking at. Well, that's because I did exactly what I was trying not to do, and I pressed too hard with the pencil, decided to change the face a little bit, uh, erase some of it, and I had left uh, some dark indentations from the pencil from pressing too hard in the paper. So I had to start with a new piece of paper. So basically what I did was I light tabled the penciled uh, figure and the new face onto a new board, and now I'm going in and just putting in the details of this character's costume and uh, the hair and everything else. It's actually easier this way because I don't have to do that much cleanup uh, because I already did it when I light tabled it. The unfortunate thing is I just wasted a, a piece of paper that's fairly expensive but that's I mean you factor that stuff in when you do commissions and so forth. You just, you never know. So you have to expect that sometimes there's going to be waste. These are much more complex pieces than what you'd see as a, a convention sketch that I might do on my lap at a show or something. Um, and of course I'm charging more for them, so I don't, I don't want to give the person something that's subpar. So if it needs to be changed, if I need to start over, I start over. But at this stage, after light tabling the figure, it's really just a matter of kind of cleaning up the line, work around it so I have a definitive area where a line that I know I'm going to be inking, and I'm not doing a bunch of guesswork during the inking process. I'll drop the cape in. Just about done. I keep going back and forth between using um, microns and uh, le pens because um, I keep seeing people use both and I keep thinking, well, maybe one's better than another. And I don't know that I've been able to figure out if one actually is better than the other. Um, they both pretty much do what they're supposed to do. Um, I've had bleeding problems with both of them while using Copic markers, but that's mainly because I start inking before 
or pardon me, start using the markers over the line work before the line work completely dry. There always seems to be a hidden spot or two that stays wet and doesn't dry like the rest of it, and that's the one you inevitably hit with your marker. But I'm going to try to avoid that this time, obviously, because then I don't want to have something that I have to repair in the drawing um, by getting a smudge or a, a line, a bleeding line. I'm not doing a, much more than tracing the drawing here. I'm not adding a bunch of line weights and stuff at this point. Uh, that's not really important to what I'm doing here. Um, most of the modeling and the three-dimensional quality that I hope to bring to the piece is going to come out in the coloring. So I'm not doing a ton of line work that I might otherwise do if I was drawing a, a normal comic book page or comic illustration. Okay, so now we're going to slow down the camera here, and I'm actually going to do this in real time. I'm using a 0.1 micron here to ink her face. Now, I usually only use these pens when I'm doing commissions like this. I don't normally use them when I'm inking comic book pages. I usually use a brush. Um, although I have to admit, using these pens is much faster and more efficient and quite frankly, most of the time, you, if you do a good job with it, you can't really tell the difference. I always like to make sure I have strong line um, work around the eyes so that they really pop out. Um, so I'm going to use darker um, areas, you know, build up my line thicker. Um, around her eyes and eyelashes. Really sort of punch that area up. I'll go ahead and put in my line work now, but after I color over the top of this, I'll probably have to go back in over it because the colored pencil and the marker that I'm going to use tends to dull the black a little bit. And again, I really want those eyes to stand out when I'm done, so I'll probably have to go back over them. there you have it. Okay, so that's what the finished piece looks like inked. Um, it's a pretty nice solid piece, but again, as you can see, it almost looks like a coloring book piece. There's not uh, much detail, even in the hair. Um, but that's all going to come, um, again, from the coloring stage. She has orange hair, red hair, reddish orange hair, so I'm going to go in with a warm gray zero to kind of put down a base. What I found is the colored pencil, you don't have to be as careful with the colored pencil when you're laying it over the top of the marker. It tends to lay down a lot smoother than it would otherwise. And then I always use my finger to kind of rub it out and get a softer edge if I need to. You can also use tissue or a piece of um, paper towel or something like that. Um, but I'm using a combination of browns and oranges here to kind of get the hair to look like I want it to. I'm doing this very softly because I don't want line work dug into the paper. I want it to have a very soft look to it. 
so I have to lay that pencil down work very softly and even then I'll go in and, and smudge it or smooth it with my finger or a tissue and again it's just a combination of oranges and browns obviously it's going to be darker where her roots are I'm going to go in with that warm zero now and all the stuff that's sort of bronze colored is going to get that quick treatment there and then the rest of the metal is kind of a darkish bluish kind of metal so I lay down a, a cold zero um, gray cool gray zero and then over the top of that I'm going to go with a uh, combination of this is a three and again you'll notice I slowed down the camera so we can take a closer look at what I'm doing here so I laid down a base of cool gray zero and I'm going over the top of that now with a three the reason I lay that base down is because it, it kind of wets the paper a little bit and allows it to blend easier as I search for my uh, my C0 or my C1 to kind of blend the edges there we go that's a it's a C1 cool gray one I try to get it as smooth as I possibly can but I still want to leave a little bit of marker texture in there um, rather than trying to get it to look airbrushy or something I still want it to feel kind of painterly I guess would be the way to put it so I'm not completely trying to eliminate any of the pen strokes I just want to soften them and you'll see I'm leaving areas there for the highlight right in the middle of all that so you've got the the darker C5 C3 and then C1 and then the C0 is the um, the white area you see there but I'm gonna go back in with white out over the top of that anyway or a white chalk pencil so even if it isn't completely white right now if I bleed into it it's not gonna make any difference because I'm going to use a, a white out pencil to kind of create the highlights the really hot spot highlights I want see I'm creating the um, a blend there but I still have texture in the marker which I kind of like and again that's going to depend on your you know what you like what you don't like what you want your stuff to look like but I think if it gets too soft and too blended you're gonna you get kind of a cheesy or brushy look so you gotta kind of uh, balance um, your texturing and your blending I mean I wanted to get kind of a I don't want to say beat up but kind of a modeled metal you know these are like would be hand pounded uh, metal armor that they made so it would have you know dents and and it wouldn't be just perfectly smooth and shiny like the Silver Surfer or something right Again, I'm using a combination of a C5, a C3, and a C1 or zero, and over the top of that zero. And all the ink is bleeding over into some of the areas I don't want it to. That's pretty easily easily fixed um, as we go along in the process. Now we're back to speedy penciling. What I do with the flesh tones, I'll lay down a, a light, really light. In this case, it was like kind of a light pink or rose color. And then I'm going, I'm going over it with orange or an orange uh, leaning pencil. I don't know exactly what color these things are. I have just a pile of colored pencils and I use whatever I can reach. But I always like to kind of go with an orange 
and I really laid down sort of almost like a crosshatch of color over the top of each other, but again, really lightly, and then I smudge it, and it tends to blend really nicely that way, so I don't have any really noticeable lines from the colored pencil in there. If I do it really softly and crosshatch, it tends to smooth itself out without too much effort on my part. And like I said, I always can go with my finger or tissue to kind of smooth it out if I want to soften it up. Now the shield I want kind of dented looking too, so I'm going to go in a little bit spotty with the markers. And again, I'm using cool grays here. I always lay down that layer of zero before I put anything over the top of it. Again, it kind of wets the paper and allows it easier to blend. Put a few cracks in there. It's obviously been used in battle. Then I go in with my brown pencil over the top of that warm gray marker to create the browns that I want there for the leather. Now we'll slow things down and take a look at what I'm doing here on the face. And I'm basically using the same technique here that I have been on the arms and the legs. This is a real light pink rose. It's called rose something. I can't remember. But um, again, I don't necessarily go out and buy particular colors. I just kind of look at what I want and what I think I might use as a flesh tone and then buy it just based on looks. And then sometimes you put it down and it's not exactly the color you think it's going to be. So um, maybe it's not as red or as orange or as peachy as you want it to be. So then you, you know, you go back in with a, another color that is closer maybe to what you're trying to get, but um, I tend to go really, really soft and really, really slowly and build up my colors, even with a colored pencil like I would if I was doing watercolor painting. I just, I'm not someone that jumps in and, and does bold colors uh, right off the bat. I really like to take it slowly and slowly build up my darker areas um, so I feel more in control of what I'm doing. And also, if you, if you make a mistake, especially with the colored pencils, I can go in there and erase it and get rid of most of it and then lay something, a different you know color over the top or something like that. But even like that, you know, the red on the nose, you know, I went through three different pencils at this point to get to that. Instead of just going in with that orange right there and doing it, I wanted to build it up over the top of lighter colors, so I'm getting there slowly. But it just, like I said, it, it just gives me a better sense of control. And there I am using my finger again to smudge the her cheeks so that, you know, it's a softer looking blush. I just don't want a lot of hard edges, especially on the face. So it's really all about laying the pencil down softly and then blending where you need to using, like I said, using a finger or, or tissue or whatever you might have. Here I go with my, now my fourth color to give that nose even just a little bit more red. And I'm going in here. See if I can blush up those cheeks. But you, you can see by, it's a little bit grainy, but you can see there's a slight texture on the paper. And by cross-hatching color over the top of color over the top of color, it creates a soft blend and you don't have these hard edges. Um, so that's kind of how I, I was never necessarily trained to do it that way. I just kind of figured that out. That if I go on this one color and lay, lay it down all the lines of that color in one direction, then I 
the crosshatch over the top of that with a different color, crosshatch over the top of that with a different color, and pretty soon you've got a pretty even, soft coating of color um, that ends up looking pretty nice. And you don't have to do a ton of blending. I do a little bit with my finger if I get an edge that's just a little too hard. But a lot of that just ends up being very, very soft looking just because of the light cross hatching I do over the top of um, repetitively over the top of each color with a new color. And of course if I want it darker to get maybe a little shadow area I will press harder. I've got kind of a harsh line underneath her eye there. I will fix that though in a second. But that's the thing you got to be careful of when you start pressing too hard then you get you can get some harsher lines that maybe you don't really want. Go in here with that's a burnt sienna, I think, to give it um, darken up her eyeshadow a little bit. And punch up the shadows on her face just a little bit with that. Again, I'm using all warm colors. You know, I'm not going in there and using a blue or purple as a shadow on her face because I want it. I want it all to stay warm. I mean, theoretically, you could be using a cooler color for the shadows, and that's what you should be doing as a painter. But a lot of times, I just I like to keep it warm, unless I'm going for a specific look or reason why it wouldn't be. A lot of times I'll go in with a mauve, um, which tends to blend real nicely with flesh tone colors. Um, just again to sort of get her a little separation in her, her eye shadows there to again to, to make her eyes pop. If I do use a cooler color like that, it will be a violet usually. Well, not a violet, more of a mauve. Um, in the shadows and stuff to cool them off, to cool them down a little bit. It tends to work a lot better for um, flesh tone shadow areas. little blue for the eyes and there you have it. The last thing I like to do once I get everything completed is go back over the outline of the figure with a usually a 0.8 um, thicker, not too thick, but it's sort of Again, when you're using colored pencils and even markers, it can gray the outline a little bit. And I don't want to lose that. So I go back over the top of it by outlining it with a, a 0.8 so I can get some separation in there. That may just be the comic book artist in me getting used to seeing stuff with a heavy black line around it. but. Now here I'm using a, um, a chalk pencil, a white chalk pencil, to go in and put in highlights. The great thing about this is it'll cover up even black. So, you know, those areas where we had bleed, where the markers bled over into the wrong area, I can just go over and hit it with the white out pencil, and it just, you know, you don't even notice it anymore. Again, there I am punching up the eyes with the, the marker to make it a little bit darker. The thing with the chalk, white chalk pencils, it won't go over colored pencil. So if I want to highlight over the top of colored pencils, I got to use Pro White, and that's what I'm using here with the brush. 
back to a pen, just put a little detail into that cape. Drop in some shadows with um, a neutral gray. And I like to put in uh, a little bit of background on these color commission pieces because, again, they're much more expensive than um, the regular convention sketches that I would do. I mean, this really isn't a sketch, but I call them uh, just marker colored pencil commissions. But um, so I, I like to put a little bit of environment around there. A lot of times, if there's a cape on there, I'll say that's your background because the capes are such a pain in the butt. But this kind of felt like it needed just a little bit more. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of soil here, a few broken weapons. Um, and then the last thing I'll do is, is uh, outline the entire figure with a warm gray number three. Depending on my mood, I'll use either three or four usually. And that just, I don't know, it helps punch the character out a little bit more. We pull back here in a minute, you'll see. I'm just using warm grays down here to create a kind of a you know a dirt or soil area. Just really more of an indication of a background. Drop in some highlights on the shield with that white chalk pencil and just a little few touch-ups here with my marker, and then you, there you have it. I don't know the name of this character, I can't remember, but it's a Dragonlance character. But this is kind of what goes into creating a color commission uh, for someone, at least the way I do it. And that, folks, is how you cram a four to five hour project into a 30 minute video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for checking it out. Before I completely sign out, I want to remind everybody that I do still have copies of Raw Imagination, 20 Years of Sketches, my hardcover sketchbook, uh, for sale and available right now. Uh, they're available with a, just a regular signed and numbered edition for $25, or you can get one with a head sketch inside the book for an additional $20. Um, you can email me at Aaron at AaronLapresti.com. Visit my website, uh, AaronLapresti.com. Message me through social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you're interested in one of those. So again, thank you for stopping by and checking out the video. Please hit the like button on the way out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. And we'll see you next time.